Okay, good day everyone. Welcome to our lecture video. In this lecture video, we will be talking about linguistic stylistics. There are two types, two broad types of stylistics, the linguistic stylistics and literary stylistics. But as of this time, we will focus on linguistic stylistics. But as we go through our very short discussion on linguistic stylistics, I will also give you a little overview on the difference between linguistic stylistics and literary stylistics. So linguistic stylistics, according to Yumoni, is also called by Widowson as formal stylistics and according to Freeman, modern stylistics, and also Fowler call it the new stylistics, and Michael Short call it as literary linguistic stylistics. So if ever you will encounter these terms, please understand that they are also referring to the linguistic stylistics that we are, that we are talking. Okay, so the primary concern of linguistic stylistics is the use of language and its effects in a text. So it is not only focused on the use of language, but there is really a consideration on the effect of that language to the text. So, for example, in a poem, a linguistic stylistic analysis will be interested in describing the form and the function of language in the poem. So not necessarily the literal meaning of that word, but direct to the function of that word in that certain poem or text. So paying attention to certain curiosities that may be accounted for in linguistic terms. So when you say curiosities, it means that are abnormalities of usage in language or outside the box of lit literal meaning. So examples of that are metaphors, metonymy, allegory. So they are not really implying the literal meaning of that word, but it has a hidden metaphorical meaning so it depends on on the function on the function of that word in that certain text so for example in robert browning's for furious lover the rain set early in tonight the sullen wind was soon away it tore the m tops down for spite and beat its worst to vex the lake. So the rain set early in tonight. Here the rain is being personified because only a person is capable of, of setting. So the sullen wind was soon awake. So imagine it's, it's in the act of being or it's in the act of waking so waking up and it's sullen gloomy wind so again it's being personified because only human being or or not really human being right because animals can also be awakened but here there is really the sense of personification so it tore the M tops down for a spite. So here we can justify that that it's above all animals. It's really personified because it it can tear. It has the ability to tear. So it tore the M tops down for a spite, for hatred, and did it worse to vex the lake. Lake. So it disturbed the lake. So in in the entirety of of the poem you can see that the rain and the wind is uh the rain and the wind are really personified so if you look at in 
to the functions of the word set, sullen, tore, awake, vex. They are curiosities of language because they does not they do not mean the literal meaning usually associated to them, but they mean the they mean with the the function attached to them in in this context. So so linguistic stylistics directs its attention on how a piece of discourse expresses the linguistic features that can be examined on the levels of language like lexis, semantics, syntax, graphology, phonology, etc. that we were always talking about in our previous lecture videos. So the existence of stylistics really or the stylistics really owes its existence to the, the various fields of linguistics because without the sub-disciplines of linguistics or without the different levels of, of linguistics, there could be no stylistics. So, Again, as I stated a while ago, we will have a little overview of the difference between linguistics and literary stylistics. So linguistic stylistics studies are the devices in language of literary texts such as rhetorical figures and syntactical patterns that are employed to produce expressive or literary style so it focuses on the levels of linguistics analysis from phonetics to pragmatics but again it is also concerned with the function of the language in a certain text so it is different from literary criticism. Literary stylistics is the same, is similar with literary criticism, but linguistic stylistics is not. Literary criticism solely depends on the subjective interpretation of texts, like how the reader would respond to the poem or, or the reader would try to gain some information of the biography of the author or, or the culture of the place where the author is living when the poem is written or even the emotional characteristics of, of the author or the, the emotional status of the author while he wrote the poem. So that's uh, the subject way of interpreting a poem. So in linguistic stylistics, it concentrates on the linguistic frameworks operative in a text. So it is having a great respect on, on the grammar and how the features of language in that text is operating or how it affects the meaning of, of the text. So that's according to Yumoni 2003. So in, as an addition, in literary criticism, you can have the, the mimetic theory, the reader's, reader's response theory, the expressivism theory, so for example, in reader's response, the interpretation of the poem depends on, on the response of the reader. So the advantage there in literary stylistics is you can have your own bias. So another is the mimetic theory, for example, that you will give or you will regard the culture of the, the author or the culture of the place of the author 
expressivism, you have to consider the emotion, expressivism theory, emotion of the author, or the biographical theory, you have to consider the, the biographical, or the biography of, of the author. So that's literary criticism. You might encounter also literary criticism theories in your other subjects. So probably if there are more time, we can also venture into that. So linguistic stylistics acknowledges the fact that it is not enough to study just the language of literary text since there are two aspects of literature, so verbal and aesthetic. So again, the, the thought is rotating to the concept that we will not only focus on, on the characteristics of the language, the features of the language in terms of grammar, but we also need to consider the aesthetic aspects or the attainment of the sense of art. So it refers to how the language has been used to express a message. So there's an art in, in literary pieces. So for example, in, in The Heart of Darkness by Conrad, you can see that there is a recollection of past events in in the introduction so the style there or the technique in delivering the the literary piece is flashbacking so that's part of the aesthetic aspect or the aesthetic function of language so Stylistics analysis in linguistics refers to the identification of patterns of usage in speech writing. So when you say patterns, we will go back again to the features of linguistics of stylist, uh, features of linguistic stylistics from phonetics down to um, pragmatics. But for now, we will have an example from semantics because semantics when converted into the delivery of the language so that's already uh, pragmatics so for example uh, uh, we already talked about these levels of stylistics analysis or linguistics analysis but in this case we will upgrade a little bit by having small examples or little examples so for example their phonological level again take note this is for phonological level so their stances of stifling scandals cause the masses to curse so you can hear the sibilance so stances stifling scandals cause the mass masses to curse so there are a lot of sound so that's an alliteration and there is a deliberate selection of sound and it can be understood as evil it implies evil so like the sound of the snakes so corruption of nigerian politicians so in the case of interpreting the these lines as referring to the corruption of Nigerian politicians, there is an intervention of literary criticism because if you do not if you do not have any idea that the author is from Nigeria, for example, so you will not be able to interpret that this is referring to the Nigerian corruption of Nigerian politicians so that's uh, going back to the culture of the place and the place where the author is living so biographical theory of literary criticism and the mimetic theory of literary criticism so let's proceed to 
the next level, graphological level. So again, as you learn in your in our previous lecture videos, graphology means the arrangement of words, the appearance of the text in the page. Arrangement, appearance. So when you go into the Microsoft Word, you can have the font style, font size, then the arrangement, you can have it vertical, you can have it horizontal. So for example, the use of capitalization or avoiding capitalization or overemphasize on punctuation or even italization or bolding your letters. So I would like also to take this opportunity to remind you that if ever you will uh, send a message to your professor, do not use all caps like you are really so needy of urgent attention or or you are implying also an intense emotion or like you are mad about the situation. So in order for and if more harmonious communication, avoid the use of capitalization because that is usually that may be my bias, but that is really usually associated with with intense emotion, negative emotion emotions. So again, if sending a message, avoid using all caps. So Another example of a graphological feature is in Emily Dickinson's poem. Emily loves to, to use punctuation, especially dashes. So the dashes in, in her literary pieces may emphasize or may give an additional emphasis to, to her thoughts. So, Another example is E.E. E. Cummings, who ignores capitaliz capitalization. So in my own bias, if you use the lowercase for all the words in your literary piece, then it may be, uh, or it denotes informality or, or just intimacy. So like if you are, if you are communicating with someone who is intimate to you, you are not really particular with capitalizing, even if it's it's the name of that person you are communicating with, right? So if you are communicating with someone who you think is in higher position to you, then of course you'll, you will really capitalize the initial of his or her name so there's a sense of formality so the the ignoring of capitalization may imply something it depends also to the reader on how she or he will understand the ignoring of capitalization so we have our own bias so in literary stylistics that's our reader response so Again, if we are writing, we do not we do not have any control, or we are sending a message. We do not have any control on how our reader or how our listener will respond to it. So the, the way they respond to it has no limits, and that's out of our control. So it's better for us to be more careful. <clears throat> so another example for graphological level is the Oshis Hillsong. Uh, so Oshis Hillsong is a very touching poem because we all go to lowering to ash. So at the end of, of our mission. So on the wrinkled face of hills, I see my shortening shadow as my sun creeps towards the west hills. Gently, 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 like afternoon's flame, lowering to ash in the evening. 
So on the wrinkled face, although it's, it's an example of the graphological level, let's also exploit the poem. Let's also exploit the, the beauty. So on the wrinkled face of hills, so imagine hills having faces, having wrinkles. So that's personification. I see my shortening shadow. So sh shortening shadow sh sound, that's alliteration. As my sun creeps towards the west hills. So it's personification again, because the sun will, not, will never creep, only human being or other forms of animals can do. And gently, gently, gently repetition. So that's to add an emphasis that it's really very gentle, like afternoon's flame. So if you see a flame, it's glaring, it's very alive, it's, it's very dynamic, but in a certain point of time, it lowers, lowering to ash. It becomes an ash. So after all the the intense energy of the fire there is a lowering to ash in the evening so this is a very uh very meaning meaningful uh poem because this is this is very relatable to any of us because we all we all end up there we all end up to ash to ash okay so let's go back to our main concern the graphological feature so the word lowering here is a range really going down to emphasize the the emotion of really falling down or there's there's a, a fallback no there is a fallback of emotion there is a fallback of of energy so that's how the the word or the arrangement of the word operates in in this text so it it gives an additional effect to to the text because that's really the function of linguistic stylistics to to analyze the text and and its effect to the text so that's for graphological level so graphological level is is a very uh, nice feature graphological features for example if you are given a chance to create your own poem you may have it arranged in a triangle style like you can have one word for the first line two words for the second line three words for the three lines or or even by syllable one syllable for the first line two syllables for the second line three syllables for for the third line and so on so you can even have a single word poem going down like the word lowering or the leaf so for example your poem is the leaf then of course the leaf is falling down the thought of of the of the poem so it depends that if you will be given a chance to create a poem or you yourself will try to create one so with that feature so i discovered that style way back in in high school when i tried to join a poetry competition poetry writing competition where i was also very particular with how i arrange the words or or how i emphasized some letters in in a stanza so I never had any idea that the term for that is graphological feature or the arrangement of of the words in a text is under graphology graphology so I hope that you will create one for yourself or or just an application of what you have learned from 
from this lecture video or maybe you are inspired with this very meaningful short poem okay let's proceed to morphological level my examples for morphological level is not really serious it's not more on on literary works Let, so much for poetry because we will get a little bit emotional for that so let's go to examples that will give public relevance or everybody can relate so for example summa cum laundry so of course this is a play of words so i hope also that with these examples you will become more observant with what you see around as you loiter in your uh, public market for example or in the malls there are some i saw some in in sm where they the name of their store the trademark is is really catchy so another is dishes it so dishes it of course it's it's an eatery so sinangag express so this could imply that express it's fast and sinangag it's for for pamasa love han ko laundry so it it is a play with a word with this one of his iron word labhan labhanako laundry so of course that's a laundry shop but it is being played into love han ko like my love honey love my love so it could imply that i will i will do your laundry with love so it depends on how you interpret so that is indeed very catchy another is second time around so this is a cliche but it 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 means that we will give your your uh like example your defective watch a second time around so so it's a repair shop for for watch or wristwatch or clocks. Then Felix the cat, uh, Felix the cut. So that's for barber shops. The way to work. So that's uh, RTW boutique, for example. So petal attraction, that's for flower shops. Parmasha with love, that's for pharmacy so i hope that uh, sooner or later you can also have some of your examples so this is quite informal for for our stylistics analysis because in 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 your study or in your research for example in in your fourth year you are required to do your thesis so you may also enjoy having this, but most would would do the literary or will use the literary pieces, so for a morphological level. So anyway, there are a lot of morphological processes that you may explore. So in this case, this is also a very good subject for research because this is publicly relevant. So, little example for syntactic level. I hope you yourself will also take the time to explore, find some research, find some journals that talks about syntactic analysis. So, for example, woman without her, man is nothing. In this first sentence or sentence structure with the aid of the punctuation, the woman is very empowered because without her man is man is nothing but in the second the woman here is very feminist depending to the man woman without her man is nothing so in this case the man is more empowered than the woman so i hope that you are in the 
for for women out there, I hope that you are a believer of the first sentence. Woman without her, man is nothing. But I don't know also for men around there listening, you might also say woman without her, man is nothing. But better to believe that without each other, we are nothing because no man is an island so we really need each other in order to survive so last for semantic level there are a lot of examples for this level like uh, for lexical semantic stylistic devices we have the personification the allegory metonymy metaphor synecdoche antonomasia so the words being used do not really uh, imply the literal meaning but the metaphorical meaning for example for the metaphors so synecdoche for example like uh, seven roofs were devastated by typhoon rolly no so it means that seven no, not really seven, let's have thousands. So, uh, 2,000 roofs were devastated by Typhoon Rolly. So, means that there were 2,000 houses or even the families inside the house were devastated by the Typhoon Rolly. So, Antonomasia might not be familiar to you, but to give you an idea, that's a substitute for substitute for the proper name for example the box office queen the pop princess the megastar instead of who sharon conetta like that so personification is very familiar to you allegory metonymy so anyway if again Given a chance, we will also have a lecture on that devices. More, there are still a lot of devices that we could explore that you could use in your, in your linguistics or stylistics analysis. Okay, so in order for you not to be bombarded with a lot of information, let, let's end up it here and we will learn more in our future lecture videos. So for now, goodbye and thank you for listening.